والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Islam is neither is no grace Islam is giving Allah praise Islam is keeping up the pace Islam is for every race Bismillah alhamdulillah and welcome to this episode of the beauties of Islam beauties of islam.com is where you'll find our website where we'll be talking about more of this subject give you the details and explanations behind what we're saying in our short little episodes that we're giving you now my name is Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I want to continue talking about the importance of understanding the way the way to almighty Allah how do I get to God and this is something that we've been talking about in numerous of these episodes and explaining that there's only some things that Allah is going to accept in fact that he made it real clear that there's something he will never accept and what he will not accept is something in Arabic called shirk what is shirk shirk is to associate partners with Allah in worship and whoever commits this whoever worships others alongside of Allah or instead of Allah then he will never accept that he tells us in the Quran in chapter 4 surah an-nisa verse 48 he does not forgive shirk but anything less than this he can forgive so this is one of the things that we definitely must avoid at all costs not setting up partners with the law because that would not be the way to get close to him would it and how do i understand that well shirk has been described in different ways by some of our scholars over the many centuries one of the things that they tell us is that there's something called shirk al akbar they've described it based on many of the teachings and findings in islam from the quran and the teachings of muhammad peace be upon him this shirk al akbar is meaning a great akbar means great great greatest of uh, this act of associating partners with the law This is someone who is uh, who commits this. They are putting a partner with Allah in a way that can be no mistake about it. This is something huge. They have said that God is a man or a man is a god. Or they have said that uh, you know something like uh, a tree is a god. Uh, they're worshiping something clearly not Allah. What they are claiming that this is a uh, worship to God. There's another type of shirk which we find and it's been described by the scholars as shirk al asghar a smaller uh, word but not necessarily a smaller deed because it's still a shirk and it's unforgivable that's when someone is going to be worshiping something like they have say I believe in God and my way to get to him is through this way for instance they said uh, Well, they have a, a a lucky amulet that they carry with them a bracelet that gives them good luck or a rabbit's foot that brings good luck but you have to wonder if the rabbit's foot is such good luck it wasn't very lucky for the rabbit was it i mean after all here's a rabbit going around on crutches saying oh gosh that rabbit's foot wasn't any good for me why is it going to work for them <laughs> but to come back to what i'm trying to convey to you is that these things called shirk won't work they're not going to be acceptable to Allah it's come to the third type of shirk that they talk about shirk al kafi and this is at what's called a hidden type of associating partners with Allah the prophet muhammad peace be upon him spoke about it like this he said could you see a black ant on a black rock on a black night in other words a night with no moon no stars totally black here's now a black rock with a black ant running across it are you going to see it <coughs> i think not and i think you understand what he's saying this is something we all have to be very careful of because it could be anywhere at any time and here we're going to give an example that 
for instance, somebody said, well, I believe in God and he's the only one that I worship. And, you know, I hope that he takes care of us. We want to thank him for everything and knock on wood, we'll never worship anything else. Okay, there's a big mistake. By going like this, the knocking on wood actually is a form of shirk. Why did you knock on the wood? Maybe you didn't know this, but that comes from a religion, an ancient religion in the European part of the world, and they worshipped a god called Wooden, and they believed that he existed in the trees, in the plants, in all of nature. And that's where our the word wood in English comes from this god they worshipped in the wood. And they used to knock on wood thinking that they were basically being in touch or making a connection with their god, Wooden. Now, if somebody did that accidentally, that might be a different story. But when people are habitually doing these same things, for instance, thank our lucky stars, you might hear somebody say that. Again, this doesn't work in Islam because they have said the stars could bring them a benefit. I'd like to give you an example of this. It was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that told us uh, in a clear hadith or saying, right after the morning prayer that was called Fajr, he turned to his companions and he talked to them about the rain. They had had rain during the night. He said, this morning, somebody became a disbeliever and somebody became a believer. As for the one who said that that rain that came during the night was because such and such a star or stars, constellations, they became a disbeliever in Allah by believing in those stars. But as far as the one who said that the rain was caused by Allah, they became a believer. So it's very clear that when people start to talk about their lucky stars or astrology or any of these uh, uh, so-called innocent little things they like to do, it's not acceptable to Allah and it's considered disbelief. Even when somebody goes to their lucky horoscope to see what kind of day they're going to have, this is a problem, a serious problem for even Muslims. Maybe you said, well, I was born in the month of July. That happens to be the Gemini. And I believe that I, I should look up and see what kind of day I'm going to have tomorrow. If you do it, you're going to have a real bad day because it means that you're not following Islam. And certainly that's not the way to Allah. We've got a lot more about this, but I want to take a break, give you a, a chance to think about it. And then when we come back, I want to tell you an, ex an explicit example of what is shirk, what is not. Talking about how to get to God all on Beauties of Islam. Sit right there, we'll be right back. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. Khayrukum, man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa'allama. Wa ratti lil-Qur'ana tartina. Learning how to recite the Qur'an properly. Learning the meaning of what we recite. Including the ahkam from the verses which we recite, trying to implement what we learn in our daily life. We we'll listen to the participants and the guests. We'll take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. In Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. We're back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. What we've been talking about is something called shirk, the unforgivable sin. Now, in English, you could call that blasphemy. That means it's the sin that nobody is going to escape from the hell if they practice it. Now, a lot of times people ask me, well, wait a minute. Are you saying that people who are not Muslims are committing shirk? I'm going to tell you this. Whoever consciously worships other than their creator, then they've committed shirk. 
And if you said, well, wait a minute, blasphemy, this is then for forgivable sin. And you, then what good would it be then if somebody used to be a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a fire worshiper and they decided they want to become a Muslim, but it won't do them any good because they're not going to be forgiven anyway? Actually, that's a very good question. Can a person ever be forgiven if they committed it? In fact, most of all of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, had been mushrikeen. That's the one who commits shirk as a mushrik, plural, mushrikeen. All of the companions, almost, of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, formerly had been mushrikeen. So it's quite obvious that by going to Islam, this cancels that out. It removes that horrible sin takes it away, and then a person is okay with their Lord. So if you or anybody you know has ever committed this, you can tell them there's a way to come back to your Lord. First and foremost is to recognize your Lord is one. He has no partners. Recognize what his way or deen, we talked about deen in so many of our programs. What is his deen? What is his way? What does he prescribe for you? Recognize that then bear witness to that orally, say it out loud, and then begin to practice that deen and never go back to this other way. This needs repentance. It means a person repents of this big mistake of worshiping other than Almighty Allah without any partners. Now, one of the things that I ran into on this subject is the discussion about the Christian who would like to be a Muslim or at least like to know more about Islam. And if they said, now hold on a second, you're saying we're committing shirk simply because we're worshiping Jesus and yet he's God. We could be Muslims too because we believe there's only one God. We believe he's Jesus and, uh, you know, we follow the way of Jesus. We as Muslims would tell you that that's a mistake because the Quran tells us Jesus was not God he was not a third of a trinity with God. There is no trinity according to Islam. And that Jesus was not the son of God, not a biological son of God. This is clear. And that God has no sons, God has no daughters. And God is not a son and he is not a daughter. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Then it goes on to say, wa lam yakuluhu kufwanahad. He's not the father of anything, not the son of anything. And, and this is real key, he's not even like anything else. Understand it like this. If you can see it, if you can hear it, if you can taste it, if you can smell it, if you can feel it, if you can even imagine it in your mind, then you cannot worship it because it is not Almighty Allah. It's not God. I realize that some people would take exception to that right away and say, no, 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 my Bible says, my Bible says. There are two things to consider about this subject. First of all, and we've talked about it in some of our other programs, the Bible that you're claiming to be from Jesus is in the English language. And it's based on some translations from Latin or Koine Greek. And these are translations from older manuscripts from other languages, Aramaic being one of the principal, and then also the Hebrew language. Unless you could really come up with an exact document that could be attributed back to Jesus himself, then how would you know that it was really accurate? That's one point. Now, and I know that people will go on and say, well, yes, but. So leaving that aside, the other point is this. Anything that you find in those older manuscripts that I was talking about that says Jesus claimed to be God, I'd be interested in it because I've studied that for a lot of years. And I never found anything where he said that. I never found anything where he even said worship other than God. In fact, if you did find something like that, here's something to consider a statement according to your English Bible it said Jesus denies this. Look in the chapter called Mark uh, 12, 29, wherein they asked Jesus, and he said, The greatest commandment is to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. 
and you have to worship Him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. That is one of the beauties of Islam. Check our website, beautiesofislam.com, for more about this subject. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum. Islam is peace. Islam